And then we're going to move in now to uh, a bit about uh, just general ID characteristics. So the main gist of this workshop is identification of, of these different oak trees. And so what I wanted to do was spend a few minutes kind of going over general tree characteristics that we use um, for identifying any tree and not just oaks. And so you'll see a lot of pictures of non-oaks here, but I wanted to um, kind of highlight this and kind of lay a, a groundwork for when we talk about the oak so you kind of understand what we're talking about. And so these are the characteristics that are used when we're uh, identifying any tree. And the big one, of course, the big two are leaf arrangement and complexity. We'll talk about that um, at length. But also leaf shape, what's the margin of the leaf like? What's the characteristics of the buds, the twigs, the bark? We look at flowers and fruit. And then if a tree has any distinguishing characteristics that set it aside. And then a great example of that would be those huge branching thorns on honey locusts. That's a great a distinguishing characteristic. But we'll talk here in detail about especially arrangement and complexity. So leaf arrangement, you can also, this also holds true for buds um, and even twigs or, or small branching of the tree. Um, this is really kind of how those are arranged. How are the buds arranged? How are the leaves arranged? Um, or even some of the small um, side branches, small twigs, how are they arranged on the tree? And there's three different ways they can be arranged, right? So one of that uh, arrangement is an opposite leaf arrangement. And that means that there's two leaves or two buds uh, across from each other. They arise across from each other on the, the twig. And so you can see that here. Here's two petioles, and a petiole is just the stem of the leaf, and they're coming out across from each other. So they're opposite each other, one to the left and one to the right. And even in the winter, you can see this. So if you look at this maple uh, twig on the right, we see we have one bud on the left, and straight across from it is one bud on the right. So these are considered opposite um uh, arrangements so in the buds in the in the leaves but even on smaller twigs so this is a red maple here in the bottom left you can see there's a two branches you know one from each side and so that sometimes isn't as evident but on smaller branches you can usually see that so that's opposite right two at a time there's a weird one out there called world and so world just means that there's three or more at a time Right, and this is very rare. In fact, there's only basically two native species that fall into this category. There's Catalpa, which is uh, here on the right, and you can see one, two, three uh, buds or leaf scars kind of at one place, and then buttonbush. And so this is a buttonbush here on the left, which is a small woody shrub, and you can see one, two, three leaves at a time. So three or more at a time is world, two at a time is opposite, and then there's alternate. So alternate is one at a time, one leaf, one bud, one branch at a time. And it often alternates from one side of the branch to the other side of the branch, right? So you have one on the left and then one on the right, but they're not across from each other. You can see that in this black cherry, we have one leaf on the left, one on the right, one on the left, one on the right. And you can see it on these buds of this red elm. One on the left, one on the right, one on the left, one on the right. So that's an alternate arrangement. Right? So you, we categorize trees, kind of the first thing that we do when we're looking at a tree uh, and trying to identify it, we figure out what is that arrangement? Is it opposite, alternate, or world? And for our oaks, they all have alternate arrangement. You can really see it in this picture here of a chinkapin oak where you see one leaf at a time, right? And they alternate along the stem. So if it has an opposite or a world arrangement, it's not going to be an oak. And then the next kind of question you have is the complexity of the leaf. And that's kind of a weird term, but I'll get into it here. It's basically how divided that leaf is um, up. And so one type of leaf complexity would be a simple leaf. And so a simple leaf is one that all the tissue on the leaf is connected. So it makes a single leaf and it's not divided up into separate leaflets that are really distinct, right? So that doesn't mean that the leaf can't be lobed like that sweet gum, which has the definite lobes on it and, and indentations, but it's all still connected into one leafy tissue part. So that's a simple leaf. 
the pawpaw on the right is unlobed. You can see it's all one leaf. So that's a simple leaf. When they are, are divided, when leaves are divided into uh, distinct leaflets or separate sections, uh, we consider that a, a compound leaf. And there's a couple different kinds of compound leaves. If it's palmately compound, it means that each of these distinct separate leaflets kind of are attached at the same point, like a central point. And so you can see that here with these buckeye leaves right there. The stem, the petiole of the leaf comes out, and then you have five different leaflets that are all separated, completely distinct, but they're all radiating out from the same point. We call that palmately compound, and, and buckeyes are the classic example of that. A little more common is pinnately compound, which means that all those leaflets are arranged along the central stem of the leaf called a rachis. So in this ash picture right here, you have this rachis that comes along all the way down the middle of the leaf. And then you have all of these distinct separate leaflets connected onto that central stem. This whole thing all the way from right here where it's connected to the, the twig out is one leaf but it's divided up into multiple leaflets. And a great example would be black walnut, where you see that one leaf right there, this whole thing, all the way from right here at the top where it connects to the, to the branch, all the way down is one leaf, but it has a ton of little leaflets that occur right along that, um, that central stem. So that's pinnately compound. Now, if you take that one step further and each of those leaflets you divide again into even smaller leaflets, then you get bipinnately compound. And, and so this is um, really just a couple um, trees kind of fall into this. So honey locust, like you see in the left, this whole thing is a leaf. You have the central rachis, it's divided once and it's divided again. So bipinnately compound. Uh, Kentucky coffee tree, this whole thing from here up is all one leaf right? Those are all little leaflets attached in a bipinnately compound way. And then there's the one that kind of falls in between, which we consider trifoliate, which just means that it has three leaflets. And so a lot of box elder leaves are trifoliate, uh, wafer ash, and things like that as well. So those are the different types of leaf complexity. The easy thing to remember when we're talking about oaks is all of our oaks here in Illinois have simple leaves. Right, so they're not compound at all. None of our Illinois oaks are compound leaves. And so you can use these two characteristics, right? So opposite alternate and simple and compound to divide up all the trees in Illinois. And you rule out quite a bit of them depending on um, those two characteristics, right? So we have opposite compound leaves. So that'd be ash and buckeye and box elders and elderberries. Opposite simple leaves like the rest of the maples, dogwoods, um, viburnums. We have alternate compound leaves, so hickories, walnuts, the honey locust, coffee tree, all of those. And then the biggest group is alternate simple. So that's alternately arranged simple leaves, which a lot of our species in Illinois fall into that, including oaks. So oaks fall into that simple alternate um, category of trees, along with beeches and chestnuts in the same family, but also a ton of other species, right? Tulip trees and willows and elms and musselwoods and cottonwoods and redbuds and so forth and so on, kind of all fall into that, that same alternate simple category. Uh, but if you know that, if you, if you get something other than alternate or simple, then you know it, it's not an oak, right? It has to be alternate and simple for it to fall into one of our oaks. And then there's leaf shape. So some leaves are unlobed, like this black gum uh, picture, and then some leaves have lobes, right? And so like the tulip tree. And that's just, uh, there's different ways that, are, that leaves are, are kind of built like that. Um, there's some trees, particularly the sassafras, that have both lobed and unlobed leaves on the same tree, which also makes it confusing. Uh, but our oaks in Illinois, we actually have both lobed and unlobed oaks in Illinois. So if you see a tree that has a leaf with no lobes, it doesn't mean necessarily that it's not an oak. So we have uh, unlobed leaves for oak, some oaks that are completely like smooth along the edge. We have unlobed leaves on oaks that have kind of teeth or waves along the edge, like the chestnut oak. And then we have oaks that have 
true lobes on them, right? So they kind of fall into all of these different categories um, um, here in Illinois. Now, outside of leaves, there's a few other things that we talk about. Uh, we do talk about twigs. So just a really, really fast, I'll just burn through this. Some terminology about twigs. The, the, tw the bud at the end of the twig is called the terminal bud. These on the sides are called lateral buds. Uh, the little circular part uh, is called a bud scale scar. And so that's where last year's terminal bud was. And so anything beyond that terminal scar out to the end is one year's growth, right? And so those you can kind of tell from that. The little dots are called lenticels. And then the places where the leaves were the last year are called leaf scars. And so there's different shapes of those and different sizes, and that kind of helps to identify um, trees. But for oaks in general, one of the characteristics of a twig that kind of is fairly consistent with oaks are that you will find buds clustered towards the tip of the twig. So on these pictures, we have the, the middle is our terminal bud, and then around the terminal bud is often a cluster of lateral buds right up tight to that, um, to that terminal bud. So you get this five, six, seven, sometimes uh, grouping of uh, buds all at the end of the branch. And so this is fairly common with um, with oak twigs, right? And so we see that a lot. And so that's one characteristic if you're looking at a tree in the winter that can kind of help you um, identify it as, as an oak. And then we use bark a lot when we're identifying trees, right? So there's different kind of descriptions. So ridge and furrow is usually long ridges that go up and down the tree with 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 furrows or, or um, deep indentations beside them if those ridges tend to crisscross sometimes we consider that a, a diamond pattern bark like in the hickory uh, some bark is peeling uh, or papery or flaky is another term you might use so this would be thin uh, easily broken pieces of bark that's that's peeling off or flaking off uh, some that has hard, more stiff pieces of bark that's that's arising might be platy or shaggy bark, we consider it. Um, if they're broken into not ridges, but to smaller uh, sizes, we might call that blocky bark, like on the, that flowering dogwood. And if the bark is smooth without any real noticeable um, ridges or, or indentations, we consider that smooth or, or tight bark, right? So oaks in general vary greatly their bark get raised greatly between the species. We have some species with very smooth bark and some species with incredibly thick, uh, heavy bark and kind of everywhere in between. And we actually sometimes uh, even varies within a species, right? And so all three of these pictures are of white oaks and they all three have very, very different looking bark, even though they occur um, within feet of each other practically, right? And so there is a lot of variation with some of these. All right, so that's just a quick overall like overview of some of the characteristics, and we're going to talk about those characteristics when we talk about each of the species. So I wanted to cover them just to make sure that we're all on the same page. And I'm going to spend the next 12 or, or so minutes um, here before our break talking about um, what characteristics and, and the differences between red oaks and white oaks. So as I mentioned earlier, we split those into those two groups. And so the section Lobate is considered the red oaks. And so these, again, as we mentioned, the acorns take two years to mature. They also don't have tyloses in their wood. And so that's just, um, tyloses are a little structure that's in wood that kind of helps stop the flow uh, of uh, material up and down through the wood. And so that's kind of meant to be a, a an ability to kind of wall off damage or prevent um, pathogens from moving through. So red oaks don't have those tyloses. White oaks do have those tyloses. Um, you're not going to use that for ID, but it's kind of interesting to know. And the reason why is that those tyloses make white oak wood waterproof and red oak wood not really waterproof. So that's why you see barrels um, that hold liquids are going to be made out of white oaks and not out of red oaks, right? Because the white oaks have those tyloses in them. So just if you're if you're a, a, a bourbon enthusiast, you can kind of is one of the reasons why white oaks are used. But again, let's look at these again, these 21 species, right? So we have those 12 in the red oak, 
nine in the white oak group. So that when you walk up on a tree and you think it's an oak, there's certain things you want to look at and kind of first divide it in. Is it a red oak or is it a white oak? So in general, and I know there's a lot of variation, red oaks have darker gray, almost black bark that is in general a little tighter uh, than a lot of our, our white oak barks. Some are strongly rich and furrowed and, and some go all the way down to smooth, but overall they're darker gray uh, to black in color. White oaks in general um, are lighter gray or almost silvery in color. Uh, they tend to be kind of ridge and furrow to platy or even flaky bark. So typically kind of a uh, bark that's thick, but also has some, some flaking going on. And so I really love this picture here. I took this a few years ago where we have a white oak on the left and a black oak, which is one of the red oaks on the right, and they're fused together, right? So you can really see um, the differences in the bark between those two, right? The lighter gray or silver bark on the left with the white oak, the darker, almost black bark on the right with the black oak. And so it jumps out, right? So on the left, we have two white oaks or three white oaks, counting the one in the middle. Uh, on the right, there's a white oak in the foreground and a black oak in the background, right? You can kind of start to see those, those differences. Some red oaks tend to have what we call ski trails. Um, and so that's just uh, the flattened ridges and they tend to be flattened and shiny on those ridges and then kind of rougher in the furrows beside the ridges. And so some of the red oaks will have these noticeable shiny, long shiny ridges that we, we call ski trails on them. Um, and so that's a characteristic that occurs on, on some, but not all of our red oaks. When you're looking at the leaves, uh, red oaks tend to have sharply pointed lobes, um, but especially they have bristle tips. And so there'll be a little bristle, a little, little point at the end uh, of these lobes. And so those leaves will be bristle tipped. So there are two unlobed species of red oaks in Illinois. If you look at the, the, the leaf, you can look at the end of the leaf and there'll still be a little bristle right at the end of it. White oaks tend to have broadly rounded lobes um, with really no bristle tips, even though we have a lot of species that are really don't have lobes, but instead have blunt rounded teeth on them instead of lobes, right? Um, so if it's rounded and not bristly, it's tip typically is going to be a white oak. And if it's sharply pointed with those little bristles, it's uh, going to be a red oak. So again, there's a lot of variation, right? So here's the nine, here's just examples of the leaves of nine of our, uh, our nine white oaks. But you can see they're either rounded uh, teeth or kind of rounded, blunted, blunted lobes on it. And then here's our 12 red oaks. And you can see on them, there's a lot of variation in leaf shape, but you can see that they do all tend to have pointed, uh, sharply pointed um, um, lobes. And if you look on them then get up close, you'll see those little bristles coming out. Alrighty, so that's just real quick, the differences between those. Um, what I wanna do now is go through another quick knowledge check-in and then open it up for questions and answers. And so we're gonna do that for a little bit and then we'll take a break. And then at the, after the quick break, we're gonna jump right into identifying uh, those, um, the, all the different native oaks.